Let me know if you guys can hear me. Countdown has begun. Loud and clear? Awesome. All right. Okay, guys, here's the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. <laughs> And hello, everybody. Welcome to Life from Lockdown, episode 85. All right. Good to see all your smiling faces there. In fact, I can't see any of them until I put my glasses on. And there we go. And suddenly, everybody's there. Good to see you guys. Lots of regulars in the house. I see Bruce is there to take care of all of our needs, including our drink orders. So, you guys asked for it. This week, we're going to do brushes inside of Photoshop. So why don't we just jump straight in without a lot of talk. Let's just jump in here. I'm going to give you guys the screen right now. Here's my desktop. And I'm just going to arrange a couple of quick little things on my desktop here so we can see things. So I can see what's happening live. There we go. Looking good. Good to see all you guys. Hope you're doing well. All right, so we're going to be doing some brushes live in Photoshop. Uh, before I do, I just let you guys know that we have some free brushes for you to download at the vault. Bruce, please drop the link in there. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with it. If you're already on the mailing list, uh, just check the latest email and you'll see a link at the bottom will take you here to the vault. But I'm going to give you some cloud brushes and, uh, you know, just some other extras and stuff. So if you guys here are not already part of the vault just go to photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault throw in your email address you'll get an email with all the download links for all these goodies so uh, make sure you download those and i'll mention them again uh, later most of you all the regulars i know have already got them and uh, people on the newsletter should already have them too so um, i'll mention it again later but why don't we just start with you know we're talking about brushes here and i'm just going through a few a few different things so I'm going to show you how to create brushes. I'm going to show you how to use brushes. Um, and, you know, we'll take some questions and stuff like that as well when it comes to brushes. So what can you do with brushes? Well, obviously you can do painting with brushes. We, we know that. But here's an example, you know, where I've used brushes for other things. For example, this particular composite that I did here, there's a, there's a few layers in here, a um, few more than what's showing here. This is oversimplified. But if I take it down here, we can see, you know, I did some, I used brushes here to create this effect. The glowing here on her wand or her bow is literally, you know, just creating flares and different things like this. See these little textures on the edges? See those? And more there. This is all literally just using custom brushes. All right. So why don't we get started? I'm just going to show you just a really, really simple brush and we'll do it on this particular image just to kind of show you. So say you wanted to create, you know, a little bit of light, uh, you know, a sun flare or something like that. So what we're going to do is just we're going to create file new. We're going to create a new image. Now, you don't have to create brushes, by the way. If you want to use brushes, you know, there's a million places you can download them. The Vault is one, but there's Brush Easy, there's DeviantArt, there's all kinds of places you can find brushes for free, or you can, you know, there's paid sites which have premium brushes. Um, they're, they're everywhere. You can find them uh, on Adobe. Adobe Stock, I believe, has brushes as well. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to hit Control-I, Command-I, and I'm just going to make this black. And why don't we start just with a black screen actually why don't i just invert this just to go back we, we'll do it in white just keep it simple for now um so what i'm gonna do is i'm just literally just gonna create a brush here and uh let's just use a soft round brush so we've got our size here you can change the size there you can change the hardness now we'll get into this in a little bit 
but we've got brush settings up here. See this little icon? Once you choose the brush, which by the way is the B key on the keyboard, B for brush. So if you're in the move tool or any other key, tap B, you go to brush. And in this little icon here, we'll open up this panel, which has two options. One is brush settings. And this includes the brushes and, you know, kind of like your presets. So these can do a lot of different things. But we go to the basic brushes under here. Now, if you see there's brushes that I've, you know, got different brushes here. Let me just collapse this. Lots of different groups. And uh, since Adobe updated the brushes panel a couple of versions ago, let me just hit the control key and click there. That will collapse all of them. Control command collapses all the arrows anywhere where there's lots of arrows in Photoshop. All right. So if you wanted to create a brush group, you would hit the folder and this group would be my group just to show you organization quickly. So there's the group and you can drag brushes in there. So that's how you add them to that group. Now, if you wanted to create a new brush, you just simply hit the little plus button here and whatever you've got selected at the time, the brush that you have active is going to be created as a new brush. So in this case, uh, we're going to create a brand new one right now. So I just wanted to show you that basic organization and you can drag these groups around by the way. And if you want to back them up, you just simply select the group click this little hamburger menu and then you can choose to export selected brushes and then I'll save them as an ABR file. Let me just show you if I was going to do that. See these ABR files. Those are the saved brushes. Now, if I want to load a brush or a brush sets back in later on, I'm just going to choose import brushes, go to that folder and you can choose any of these. Let me grab Colin smoke, etc. Boom. There it is. And that's the set with all the brushes in there. Okay, so that's how you save them. And, you know, we're not going to get into Creative Cloud and, you know, Dropbox and all those kind of things right now. I just wanted to show you basic how to load and save them because I always get that question. All right, creating a custom brush. So let's grab the brush tool. Hit the D key. We'll reset the foreground background colors because what I want is maximum contrast. I'm just going to do a simple brush right now. And I'm going to create this brush a black brush. All right, so let's just go down to a simple brush. And if we look under the brushes here, now there's preset brushes that come with Photoshop, you know, the soft round, hard round, we'll talk about those in a moment. But for now, let's just grab a soft round brush, which is a default brush. Now these have the ability to do some things we can't do with other brushes, but we'll look at that. Not just yet. So all I'm going to do is with this, I'm going to make sure that I'm choosing black. I want my opacity and flow up to 100. I'm not using my Wacom right now. I have a Wacom pen. We'll, we'll see if we have time to cover that as well. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and that's just going to create just a little blob. All right. So let's add a little noise to it. So we're going to choose filter noise. I'm just going to add some noise and um, no, obviously not that much noise, just a little bit, just to break it up a little bit. See that? Make it look more airbrushed so it's not quite so smooth. Click OK. All right. Excellent. Now we're just going to blur this a little bit. Just choose filter blur, grab a Gaussian blur. And all I'm doing is just, I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. That's, that's all I'm doing. Let's make it denser. Control L for levels. See that little gap? That means that there's nothing there. So drag that to the where the black begins. And once again, the denser a brush is, it means more blacks, more whites. That contrast is going to make that brush pop. If the brush is gray, it's going to appear as a 50% gray when we apply it to our image. All right, great. All right, so now we're just going to go over here. I'm just going to make a selection around the brush. And this is how we create a brush. Choose Edit. And then we're going to go Define Brush Preset. And we're going to call this Sun. OK, click OK. Great. Control D, let's turn it off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second little bit of this, but I'm going to be using the same brush. So generally speaking, when you select a brush, I believe that's the one that gets selected. Yeah, there it is. Once you create a brush, it becomes your selected brush. So I'm going to create a second part to this, just a, a little bit of a flare off to the side. There we go. And now I don't know if this is going to look any good or not, but I just want to show you guys how it works. We're going to create a new brush out of that. Edit, define brush preset. And notice now we've got this eclipse. 
This is not going to look like an eclipse. It's going to look more like a flare, just so you know. Control D, turn it off. All right, so we've got that brush. And then, you know, so this is just an essence, you know, like really simple how to create a brush. So let's create a new layer and say we wanted to put this on there. Choose the color. We're going to paint with white. Notice that that brush is selected. And then we just tap and that brush is essentially the one we're working with. So, you know, if you wanted to, you know, make it look like some kind of a flare, you would drop it in here, change the blend mode to something, you know, I don't know, lighten or a screen or something, drop the opacity down. And you could use this to, you know, create flares, different types of things. Maybe that doesn't look good. Let's make it a little smaller. And, you know, if I was looking for something more like a, a lens flare, kind of sun flare, whatever, like that. But essentially, that's how we create the brush. Now, that's a very, very simple brush. Now we can go in and we can use all kinds of brushes. Now that I've shown you how to create that, you know, we could go in and choose, you know, much fancier looking brushes. And this is where you go through and you can view your brushes. Now, if you don't see the little thumbnails here, what you do is grab this little icon and see where it says brush tip. That brush tip will show you what the brush looks like. So there's two things you can do for brush. One, you can stamp like we did just there and you're basically stamping a shape. And then when you do that, what you want to do is you want to look at the brush tip. And these are brushes you might stamp with. Now, there's other things we can do with brushes. Like, you know, you might stamp with this, you know, create a fog, see that? This kind of thing I was doing over there. Let me make that smaller. And I'm just using the left bracket key. And remember, see this kind of thing here? I want to create some of that kind of atmosphere. Let me show you. And maybe I'm using a, a light blue. So this is the stamping with a brush. And this is essentially, see how we can create these wisps around here. And that's how I did it. Just essentially, just, you know, it's just a different shape brush. You know, obviously I created a very circular brush, simple one to show you how to do it. But then you can grab those different brushes and you can stamp with them. Now, the other way you can do a brush is you can paint with it, you can drag with it, and that's more of a stroke. Now, here's the thing. When you're creating your custom brushes, you know, the ones that you are going to be creating from a snapshot, a lot of the time these are going to be stamped brushes. However, we can use these for basic for stroke brushes. So, for example, you know, when I do things like smoke or whatever, it would work like that. But let's have a look how we view the strokes. If you choose brush stroke, you can see these brushes are now designed more for dragging. And, some, and this is what these stamps, see there's a stamp shape. So when you create a brush, all you do is you create that shape and then that's all a brush is. See, see that shape? If we look at this bristle, that's what the bristle looks like, right? But you can paint with it and you can get a stroke. So when we look in here, there's the stroke. This is what it's gonna look like when you drag with the brush and the nice thing about being able to drag with a brush is we can set a different dynamics. So number one, we just covered it already. If you just want to stamp something, get a shape and just apply it. There we go. Works great. You know, works on photos, works on all kinds of things. Before I do, let me just show you um, once again, just let me hide this really quick. So say I wanted to create one out of this dragon. I would just select the dragon, make sure I'm on the correct layer edit, define, obviously it's not going to be perfectly clean because I'm not doing that, but I just want to just reiterate before we move on to the stroke brushes. So this is like a stamp brush. So we're going to define the brush preset and you know, it's going to look like that. So you want to stamp that dragon. You would just essentially use that brush. Let me get a layer on top and turn off that selection turn on that layer and then once again you're stamping you're literally just stamping with an image right okay let's talk about the stroke brushes so what makes a stroke brush special is that we have the ability to apply a lot of different attributes to it and you'll see a lot of these in fact you know when we click this little panel here the brush settings see these these are all the different things that we can apply to these stroke or these shapes in order to create strokes or you know strokes as in brush strokes now let's go to the brushes and the basic ones are general brushes now what a lot of people don't realize about these brushes 
there's a little clue about how the pen pressure works. So let me just get myself here. So pen pressure is, an, you know, I'm using a Wacom pen here. Maybe you're using a Wacom Microsoft Surface, something like that, that supports pen pressure. Now, if you support pen pressure, you can do different things. Now, you don't have to support pen pressure to do these things. The pen pressure just makes it easier. Let me show you, for example, see these brushes. We've got soft round, hard round. Let me just quickly do this because I just want to show you a hard round brush is exactly that. That's the shape of the brush is that circle. That's how they created it. And then if you drag it, there's the stroke. Soft round, same kind of thing, but it has a soft edge. Okay, so there's hard and soft. Now you can change those under the brush settings. You know, you'll see you'll see a, a softness setting. Um, let me go in here. There's our size, and where are we? Our brush settings. Oh, actually, we have to grab the right kind of brush. Here we go. Let's grab a brush, brush tip shape, brush dynamics, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, here's our size, and our hardness should be there. I guess I grabbed the wrong brush. Let's, where are we? Brush settings. There we go. Anyway, so, um, what am I doing here? Anyway, we'll 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 get to that. You'll see you'll see the brush settings. It's 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 very common. Oh, here we go. We click there. There we go. Hardness. Hardness. So that makes a hard brush. That makes a soft brush. And then you know in between is how hard or how soft we want it. Okay, so that's what that does. So size, how big it is. Hardness, soft, hard. Right. Okay, so then we've got these offers. See how these taper. So when these taper, that means that pen pressure is set to size. Now, let me show you where you would set all of this. And this is why it's a little confusing for me because a lot of the time I work out of the brushes panel. So let's go to the brushes panel, window brushes and window brush settings. There we go. And drag this up to the side here. I guess it's the same brush. I'm just used to it over in the side. Hang on. Let me just collapse this down a little bit. There we go. All right, so here's the settings that we can do. So the big one is shape dynamics and transfer. So shape dynamics, if you have a pen, notice that little exclamation mark disappears when I go here because it sees a pen on the tablet. I can set pen pressure to the shape, size, pen pressure, size jitter. So if I push hard, I get a thick brush. If I push light, I get a thinner brush. And you can see the hardness is just going there. I can hit brush shape there and under brush shape, I can change the hardness so light touch thinner let me turn that off light touch thinner heavier touch thicker see that so you can change the thickness of that brush now the second thing you can change let's turn that off is transfer opacity pen pressure and this is where we can change the transparency now if you look on these brush previews See how this looks like a little worm? This one looks tapered. That means it's size. See how these ones fade at the end versus being solid? Fade, solid, fade, solid. That means that pen pressure affects opacity. So that means if I use a light touch, it's more transparent. If I use a heavy touch, it's more opaque. So see how I can adjust the pen pressure with that. Now, if you're using a mouse, you just have to adjust it. You can't change the pen pressure. You would just have to choose, you know, you could use a fade. So opacity means that over a certain distance, see how that fades. And, um, and if you change the length of that fade, see how it will fade slower or it will fade faster. See how that's happening there. Now you could do the same thing if you wanted, you know, you can use this opacity fade if you want with a pen, but pen pressure is a better way to go. All right, so you've got those options. But then there's other options. Let me clear all of this out because it's getting a little messy. And then when we get to things, you know, like, for example, the cloud brush that I like to create, which I, I gave you guys in the vault. Let me just create a, a grab one. And I'll show you a quick way to get to these, by the way. Instead of having to scroll through here, you can save these in your creative cloud library let me show you so if we click under here under libraries and i've got thing, an overlays here notice i've got these brushes there's different types of brushes here now i'll show you what happens in the brushes panel as we do this watch the brushes panel 
Now we've got the soft round. I can actually select a brush here. Like say I want my cloud brush. If I click, notice what happens here. It actually goes down and it selects the cloud brush. The cloud brush, see there, is the one that's active because I selected it from here. So I can click in here and this will enable me to jump quickly to another brush. Let me create a layer on top so we can work with the brush. Turn that layer on, create a layer. And for example, hey, I've got a grungy brush going on here. Or I want my cloud brush. Click on clouds. And with the cloud brush, let me just show you. This is how I would use it. Use it with a white, maybe. I would drop the flow and opacity down a little bit. Let's drop the opacity down quite low. Make the brush a little bigger. Tap on here to get the settings. Set opacity to pen pressure. And then you just kind of build up. So you're building up your clouds, you know, larger. And then we go for a smaller brush. Then maybe you go for a slightly darker brush. And we'll break this down in just a second. And I'm going to go even smaller here. And see what I'm doing here is I'm just painting with that brush. You can go darker. And the key to making something like clouds or smoke or anything like that is just don't use the same shade of gray the whole time. Or it just tends to look very, very flat. If you add lighter and darker areas, you'll get more of a three-dimensional kind of a feel. Okay, so we're working with that brush. So what makes that brush work? So if we look at the brush, all it is, let me go down to my brushes. I know they're down here somewhere. Cloud brush, right? And let's go under the brush settings and see what we have. So if you click at the top where it says brush settings, brush tip shape, on the brush tip shape, there's the shape of the brush. All it is is just a little moon shape. See that? Like literally... All I did is I just created a circle. Let me just create a new document just to just show you basically all I did. So all I did is I to create that brush is I created a circle, filled it with black, made a little circle. By the way, spacebar enables you to move the um, tool around while you're working with it. And then I just cut a little chunk out of it, filter blur. And um, that's it. And so I did that and I just made the selection around it and then I defined the brush, you know, like, like, like I showed you at the very beginning of this. So what makes this special? What makes this, you know, cloud brush work the way it does? Well, some of the settings. So let's look at these settings. So the big setting, you know, obviously is transfer is something that you've got to do here. So you want to have this controlled, but then the big thing is scattering. So when we created that brush, I scattered it. So scattering enables that brush to multiply. And um, let me just do that with black. So you can see, see how that multiplies? Let me turn the opacity all the way up so you guys can see. And that's what's happening, is it's multiplying. So you choose scattering. You choose a big amount of scattering. And let's see what we can do there. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing that scattering down a little bit. The count is how many. See at the bottom here, it shows you. So higher amounts going to give you more of that brush, lower amounts going to do more. So this is how you kind of create a, a particle brush, so to speak. And then the count jitter is like how random that's going to be. So every time you do that, sometimes there might be more, sometimes there might be less. The word jitter means random. And then we want to do other things like shape dynamics. So the size jitter, this means that the size is going to see how it at the bottom there, it's random. If you keep the jitter low, everything is uniform. Everything is the same. As you increase it, now you get more randomness in size. Now, if you don't want super tiny ones, you can set a minimum diameter. That means that's as small as they could possibly get. And angle jitter. Once again, randomness. Let's just turn it up so now the angles are all over the place. See that? They're not all pointing the same direction now. Same with roundness. This will change the shape. See how now they're all different shapes? You know, when you see type and it works like that, that's essentially how you do it. All right. And once again, you can set a minimum roundness if you want it like, okay, and you want it to vary just a little bit, you could do it like that. Or if you want it to vary a lot, you could do it like that. See that? But if you don't want those sharp edges like that, turn the minimum up a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, we can flip them. We can do all kinds of things. 
Another thing that can sometimes look good is, um, let's go under the transfer here, opacity jitter. If we turn this up, notice the opacity is going to be different now on all of them. See that? If I turn opacity down, they're all going to be the same. So opacity jitter is another way. Flow jitter. And see how this gives us more and more randomness as we're creating these brushes. So then, you know, when you want to create a cluster of brushes or shapes like this, this is how you do it. Look at this. See how they're all different now because we were changing those, those jitters. Now, the brush shape is another thing that's interesting. Now, you can change the angle and the roundness, by the way. Um, let me just turn the scattering off just for a second and the shape just to show you something. So this is good to learn this control. I don't know if you guys have gone this uh, deep into the brushes before, but these are useful settings. Um, so if I click here like that, and let's turn transfer off, and I'm just going to do a basic brush. That's the shape. So every time I, I it's just going to be a stamp, right? So all of these can turn that individual stamp into these kind of cool things, you know, and as I drag it, that's going to do that now, but because I've got the scattering and everything turned off and I drag this, it's just going to create a brush stroke. If you go that way, that that's essentially what you're doing. All right, but let's look at some of the things in the brush shape. So if I drag it across, see how we get a nice smooth line. If I increase the spacing, this is how we created a dotted line. Now, sometimes I see people working with a brush and it's kind of like you work with a brush and see it's like that's not smooth. That's because of the spacing. If you turn that spacing down, now you get a smooth brush stroke. See that? So the spacing can be useful for all kinds of things. You know, you could do it for dotted lines. Let's make this really small. You know, if you wanted to make it look like a dotted line, just increase that spacing a little bit. See that? And that's that's essentially how you can do that. So spacing is another useful thing for effect, and it's also super useful for... Um, you know, creating, uh, you know, scattering and, and getting smooth strokes or rough strokes, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So then the other thing is let's change the shape of this a little bit. We're going to squish it. See how you can grab this brush and you can squish it. So now it looks like that. Now this works well when you're doing something like a grunge brush or something like that. You know, when you're grunging and you're trying to grunge up the edges of um, text and I'll show you in just a second. But there's a thing that a lot of people don't use, and that is the angle. You can drag here and change the angle. So see that brush? Now I click here, the angle's there. I click there, the angle's there. Now, you can do this um, on the keyboard. See, I'm using the arrow keys. So I can actually just tap the arrow key, and as I'm tapping the arrow key, notice how it's changing here. Also, it's changing there. Look at this. Now, if you want to speed that up, just hit the shift key and the arrow key at the same time, and you can do that faster. See that shift arrow. So that's another way you can change it. So you can go in here and you can manually change them, or you can use that shift, which was added, I believe, about a year or two years ago. They added that arrow keyboard shortcut into Photoshop, which is super useful. Um, if you guys are doing, you know, all that kind of, you know, stuff of that. All right. You know, like grungy kind of work. Um, you know, a lot of people do like scrapbooking stuff or overlays, different things like that. You're grunging it up. You want to change the angle of the brush. That's super useful. Okay. So let me show you something. For example, let's just do um, this and we'll just do something and we'll call it... Uh, Yeah. What are we? Episode number 85, right? Are we 85? Okay, so let's do 85. Okay, so grunge text. I don't know if it's like, I guess it's still popular. It's not as popular as it was. Um, it's still popular, but this rasterize the type. Um, and I'm going to create a mask. Now, all, if I want to grunge up this type, all I need to do is grab a brush and I can use a brush to grunge this up. Now, download, just go for grungy brushes or whatever, um, spatter brushes, you know, whatever. I'm looking, these chalk brushes come with Photoshop. These will work nicely to show you. I don't think these are the best for this, but um, as far as the ones that ship with Photoshop, they are. So this will this will demonstrate the thing here, what I want to do. So I want to make that where I'm taking little chunks out. So on the mask, 
make sure we're working with black and then you go like that right and then if you use that arrow key now they're not all going to come from the same angle let me do the shift arrow because it's going to take forever now you can start to come in from the other side and you can vary those angles as you start to grime up the text now of course you know you going to find better grungy brushes than that but those are you know i wanted to show you the ones that come with photoshop and what have we got here we've got so many brushes um let's see what have i got here splash grunge okay so here's some grungy ones that i downloaded from somewhere plastic wrap i don't even know what that looks like but yeah see that looks that's more like what i'm wanting you see that and then you're just kind of using those, um, you know, you might make some larger and see how what we're doing now is we're distressing the type. Now you can drop the opacity of this down. So if you want to just semi do it, you know, so it's now some of those areas are just becoming gray. Now you would take time, of course, use smaller brushes, vary the brushes if you want a better result, but I'm just kind of scratching this up a little bit. Let's put some scrapes on there. Mm, don't like that. And see what we're doing now is we're doing that. Now let's take it to 100%. And then you want to just get some of those areas where you just maybe do it several times and you really want to just kind of distress those edges out. Now, if this really is going to look good, though, you need to use a few different types of brushes, you know, like vary those brushes. Don't use the same brush all the time, the same size, you know, like there I, I got impatient. It, it takes time and patience. Um, and sometimes you might find that perfect one that just has that perfect grunge for you you know, all in one, like some brushes have that. But see what I'm doing is I'm just distressing it there, relicking it uh, for Bruce. You know, it's what they do to the guitars. We were looking at guitars this morning and they, I don't know. If those of you who don't play guitars, you know, when they do the stonewashed jeans, you can buy guitars like that, that someone else has already scratched up and banged up for you. So you don't have to bang them up over years. So it makes the guitar look like it's old um all right so anyway so you guys get the idea so you want to kind of create that that's um essentially you know what we're doing with those now i guess i could just look in here it's probably faster yeah look at that just go in there and there we go that's <laughs> that's a lot quicker and you know you can see your brushes in here now you want to put water and stuff around them same thing you just grab water brushes and you know, once again, you're just stamping on these brushes and uh, here's some water. It's a little big. Let's make it, make it a little smaller. And then you can, let's change the angle of that. And that's the nice thing about that overlay. Now you can get, Wacom makes uh, the art pen. So you can use the art pen, which has already the, um, you know, has a rotation, barrel rotation on it. I have one somewhere I would show you guys, but I, I don't know where it is. But, you know, say you're doing some, well, it's too much. Let's turn that down. A little bit of color goes a long way, way further than you would think. Okay, there we go. So now you're kind of splashing, you know, splash, splash, I was taking a bath, you know, and you're kind of dropping all that stuff down. And, you know, that's essentially how you create those kind of effects, just simply just grabbing these brushes. So here's, you know, another thing we can do, I guess, with brushes. All right, so you can do the kind of splashy things, you know, some particle effects, you know, uh, you want to do feathers. Let me show you an example here. Let me show you a kind of fun thing with brushes here. Let's see if this works. I have this idea. Let's go here and let's go a bit smaller. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is and create an interesting effect. So I'm just going to apply that. Yeah, that looks hard. Uh, let me grab a bit of brush. Sometimes you just got to find the right brush. Let me show you something interesting here. I'm just scrolling through, through here and see how you can look at them and you can change them once again. You can, you know, view them however you want, but let's find something. I'm going to show you how to create a cool little repeat stamp repeat kind of thing what's this one gonna look like yeah that one will do okay so if i wanted to repeat this i can stamp once now control j control t for free transform grab it into the corner here and i want to duplicate it i do that right 
So let me show you this, see if I can get the keyboard shortcut right first before I show you. There we go. So what I'm doing is holding down Option. The Option key will duplicate it. And then Command Shift and T. And every time I tap the T key, it's going to do a stamp and repeat of that same thing. And then you can create cool little shapes like that. Um, just I'll just put Control G, put that into a group, and you can create little pinwheels and and fun things like that. You know, from brushes, just repeating them. Um, and now, you know, if I wanted, I could just Control E to flatten all of that, select it, you know, and make a new brush out of that. So I wouldn't. So I could literally have a brush, and now I could stamp with those pinwheels. I wouldn't have to create them all the time. Um, so anyway, we're just kind of exploring a lot of things we can do here with brushes. Now, I want to show you how to create a brush from scratch from natural media. So uh, let's just go to me on the camera. Hey, guys. I hope I'm just kind of, by the way, I'm just shotgunning information here. Hopefully it's useful um, and you're getting something out of this. If you are, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys are new, welcome to the cafe. Um, hit subscribe and you won't miss any of the videos. Turn on those notifications and then hopefully you'll get some notifications. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I've got some paper. I got some uh, watercolor pens and I'm just literally just going to create something on a piece of paper and I'm going to show you how to turn that into a brush. Now, if you guys have got any questions, um, throw those questions up there because I'm just, now we're going full on art. We're going into art mode. I've got some water in here. Awesome. I've got a pen. Let me just grab a dark one. I have no idea what's going to come out of this. I'm just literally just going to throw something at the paper and let's just see what we get. How's that sound? All right. So, um, Ooh, I'm just I'm just drawing. I, I know you can't see. I don't have an overhead camera. I apologize for that, um, or or not, because what I'm doing is actually just literally nothing. It's just just a blob. All right. So now I'm going to take some water. Uh, looking for the questions here. Drop any questions you guys got them. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you, Susan. All right. So now I'm taking this pen. It's has it's just water, <laughs> literally water, and I'm just going to drop some water on here. I, got a, some uh, secret Santa uh, a friend of mine Perry got me some watercolor brushes for Christmas for the secret Santa and oh that's not working well okay that's a complete disaster I think I need to go to the watercolor paper because um, it's just soaking through layers of paper right there it's uh, that's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to drop some water on here. And by the way, I, have, I don't know how to use watercolors. So this is why it's like, oh, what's happening? I have no idea. So I just put a drop of water on there and I'm just putting a pen around, trying to get some, uh, I don't know, some, some water onto it. Like, if anyone's got any tips on watercolors, I'm more than happy to get your tips because I have no idea how to do it. All right, so I've got a little bit of watercolor on here. And what I'm doing is I've just literally just... I'm just going to let it run. So what I'm doing is I'm just literally, whoa, try not to make a huge mess. Okay, so I'm just literally just letting this watercolor just smudge on the page. And now we're going to take a picture of it. All right. So all the watercolor experts are cringing like, oh my gosh, what's this guy doing? All right, so I'm going to take a picture. And I just want to show you how easy it is to... You know, it's nothing, by the way. It's just nothing. It's just, but I'm going to show you how it works. All right, so I'm going to airdrop this to my computer. So let me just uh, airdrop this. So grab it here, share it, and I'm going to Collins Mac. And let's do this. Let's airdrop this. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Receiving it. Got it. All right, so let's open this. And I'm just showing you, this is how easy it is to create a brush. Now, this is just, <laughs> it's terrible, but it's all right. It's okay. This will illustrate the point very, very well of how you can make something out of nothing. Okay, so control L for levels. And let's, let's see if we can lighten up the whites. 
clean that up a little bit. What do we got going here? Um, I probably should have used a smoother paper. Anyway, but this this will be fine. Okay, so um, let me image rotate. 180 okay that that's the right way up by the way I don't know if you guys really oh hang on screen 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 okay desktop here we go all right so this is just a blob it is literally it's a blob okay so this is upside down so let's put it the right way up um so we're going to rotate campus rotation 180 yep see that's the proper way up doesn't it make sense to you guys now and um let's have a look now, a paint splatter would have actually looked better, like one of these splatters. That's, but this is how you create the brush, okay? So you don't judge my um, splattering, okay? Maybe you guys can splatter better than I can. All right, so why don't we go in here and let's see. What, what happens if we do a threshold on this? I'm just looking for something random. Okay, that could be could be kind of interesting. Yeah, no. Maybe not. Let's have a look. And we're going to go into the layers panel. There you are. Okay, so what happens if I try something with a blending mode? Looking for something maybe a little bit more useful. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Okay. And control E, we're going to merge all that together. And then I decide I want to make a brush out of this. So let's make this selection around there. You know, that's kind of cool too, though. Hang on a sec. I've got an idea. I have an idea. Control J, copy that to the top. Okay, I have an idea. We're, all is not lost. All right. So let's just fill that. And I'm going to grab this, drag it up, Control J. Control J to duplicate it, Control T for free transform, and we're going to flip this vertical. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key, I'm going to drag this down, here we go. All right, see, I told you, I told you we'd get there, no faith in me, no faith in me at all. All right, so we've got that there, and why don't we make it squishy? And control E and control J to copy it again. And let's go flip horizontal. All right. And we're going in here somewhere. Look at that. Come on. That's a beautiful, very, very accurate um, representation of whatever it is. I mean, it looks exactly like a um, whatever it is. All right. So now that we've done that, what we can do is create. A selection around it actually let's get rid of some of these little dots though let me hit the E for eraser because you don't want dots everywhere I can keep one but if I have four then it looks like an obvious you know like we flipped it or whatever we did to it all right so let's go around there we're gonna choose edit define brush and we're gonna define it and we're gonna call it a thing because I have no idea what it really is but this is what art is. Um, <laughs> it's just experimentation, right? So let's go here. We go to brush. Let's go a little bit smaller. And okay. All right. We have a brush. So let's do something with this brush now. Let's go under the brush settings. And we're going to choose our brush dynamics. Here's our shape dynamics. And let's do some scattering. Okay. That's not scattering yet, is it? But if we turn both axes and we scatter it now, okay, we've got something scattering. Good. That's what we want. Awesome. Let's do more and let's increase that count a little bit and count jitter. Count jitter, by the way, is not a vampire. I, I used to think he was a vampire. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, now, I could set this, of course, to pan pressure if we wanted. Let's go to shape dynamics. Let's do the randomness shape jitter. That would be awesome. And why don't we do the same thing here with opacity? We've got lots of opacity jitter. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. And let's use dual brush. Dual brush lets me mix this with a secondary brush. So let's grab some little stars in there. And um, so what it's doing is it's actually 
working with the little stars. This increases the size. All right, cool. And uh, color dynamics. Why don't we do a little hue jitter so the color's going to shift a little bit. Look at that. Saturation. Let's keep the brightness where it is. Um, and we could even add a texture in there if we wanted, but let's work a little bit on that spacing. There we go. And we're going to increase this in size. And look at this. Now we have a... I have no idea what it is, but it's fun. See that? Um, now, if you want to get it a little closer, let's bring that spacing a little closer together. And now you could paint with that. And let me change the color of this to a greenish color. Oh, there we go. That's kind of fun. Let's turn off the color dynamics, though. There we go. And so if you were doing something like, uh, you know, we could create some uh, glitter. You know, what, what do you call those things you wrap around everything at Christmas time? Tinsel. Little tinsel things you could do with those. Um, let me undo these a little bit. Grab a darker brush. And, you know, maybe we're doing some, you know, some plants. You know, working here with some darker kind of colors here. Not those kind of plants. God, you guys. All right, so let's go a little bit darker here. And we just, so we're adding some, you know, hey. Now we're putting some bushes in here a little bit. And sometimes they look nice when you go darker and then you start to go lighter. You know, just add a couple of little light bits in there. Maybe even a little more pale. Make it a little bit smaller. And, you know, now you're putting little bits in there and you're, Starting to draw plants or bushes or grass or, or different things like that. So, you know, basically what I'm doing there is I'm just showing you guys like that came from, from that. So, you know, experiment, you know, like this is, I think, Hopefully this is giving you guys just, you know, scratching the surface a little bit of the kind of things that you can do with brushes in Photoshop. And what, I'm, what am I doing here is I'm just experimenting and I'm just going just kind of crazy pipe cleaner. There we go. It was a pipe cleaner. Thank you, Misty. That's exactly what I was going for. But, but as you can see, you know, you can come up with all kinds of cool things. And, but the thing is now I can save this. I'm like, oh, you know what? I've got my brush. It's a, um, uh, you, know, you know, I, I don't know, but it's that brush pipe cleaner. Okay. So why don't we click here and we're going to call it pipe cleaner. Actually, I'd call it a fern brush maybe, or, or, you know, that's like that spiky grass, you know, the stuff that st stuff that's sharp and, and hurts you. Um, and then what we could do is under the library, if I drag this into the library, um, from wherever it is the the brush should be able to drag it from oh, i have to go into brushes there we go pipe cleaner drag that into here boom and now in the library that crazy brush is there now in case i ever need it there it is pipe cleaner if i ever need that brush even though we didn't know what it was when we were creating it you know i could increase the size of that i could use it for ice that could be you know like where the ice is breaking i could have that along the edge if i kind of did a blue made it bigger there's a lot of different things you know sometimes you want a really sharp jaggy edge brush if i make it really small you know we can use it for different things you know you could be painting with it you want to make it look like a texture on a paper um you know that could be a trail through the sky there's a lot of different things you could be doing with it so if you experiment and start to build up a library of brushes you can um you know you can do a lot of different things with those brushes and then of course you know if you actually go in there with a plan you know where you actually are splattering you know a bunch of ink on paper like take a huge piece of seamless paper grab a black ink and just start splattering it everywhere. Do the exact same process that I showed you. You know, take a picture of it, bring it into Photoshop, put a circle around it, you know, square around it, define brush. That's literally how you create these, these splatter brushes. That's how these brushes are made. Just, you know, same way. You know, and then you've got those splatter brushes. So, you know, these things can just, this these can be created. And I think they're like really useful. So anyway, I'm glad you guys are liking that. 
more like a cannabis plant. I was trying not to say that, Philip, but it did sort of look that way. Um, capture the whole pipe cleaner brush and make brush. Yeah, and, but the other thing too is you can take photographs of real objects. And, and that's the other thing too is, um, let me quickly show you that. Like if we have photos, we can make brushes out of, you know, photos or even illustrations. You know, say for example, I've got these birds here. And I want a bird brush. Make a selection around the bird. Edit the fine brush preset. Watch this. Bird. Boom. And then you're working on another picture here and you're like, oh, what a lovely picture of this. Let me reset my workspace because it's getting a little bit of a mess here. Uh, let me just workspace, reset, reset. Okay, there we go. Ah, not so bad. Okay, so we hit this for white and then, you know, hey, you want birds in the sky? Oh yeah, no problem. Just boom, there's a bird. Well, let's turn the opacity up and hit our settings. Turn shape dynamics off, transfer off, and we just got a bird, right? That's too big. There we go. You got a bird. Let's make it not quite so white. Boom. There we go. And then, so you got these birds in the sky. Now, if you wanted to scatter them, you could choose scattering, scatter the size, the count, the count jitter. Then I would change the size of these a little bit maybe not that much I think I got a little carried away with the scattering let's bring those down a little bit scatter on both axes we got tons of them and you know now you start to add lots of seagulls let's take that to pen pressure off there we go and so you know and of course you can set the the minimum diameters and angles, the angle jitter, you know, so if you don't want them, you don't want them flying upside down, you can control it there. So anyway, that that's how you could kind of do those kind of things with the brushes. All right. And then of course you can do textures and yeah, all kinds of things. So hopefully that was something that was useful. Seagulls looking for drones. Yeah. Yeah. Dojo. I have had that problem more than once. So, while we're here, why don't we have a look at something that we enjoy doing, which I have not created a title screen for yet. Maybe one of these days I need to. And that's what you guys have contributed. But before I do, quickly, if you don't mind, Bruce, please um, share the link to the vault. If you guys want some brushes, you know, that I've actually created, you know, cloud brushes here that I've actually carefully planned and created, you can grab those for free. Uh, and all these other resources, ebooks and presets and all that kind of stuff. PhotoshopCafe.com forward slash vault. If you're already subscribed to our newsletter, don't go there and try and download it. It won't work. Go to your newsletter and just click the link and you can download them directly from there. Now, if they don't work, which sometimes happens, like I think about one person out of every thousand people, they're like, I click and nothing happens. Use a different web browser. And if you do, out of those people, 99 out of 100 of those people changing the web browser makes it work. For that one person out of 1,000, that that one person out of 100, so it's a one person out of whatever, and that doesn't work, right-click and choose download. And that will solve all the issues that you guys could, could have with those. So um, just letting you guys know that. All right, so that's where you can download all that stuff. All right, so let's have a look at some of the things that you guys have submitted this week to our Facebook group. Now, Bruce, if you don't mind dropping a link there, we've got a group, a Photoshop Cafe group on Facebook where we hang out, we chat, we share things. Um, you guys, uh, you know, we do challenges and, uh, and all kinds of things. And in fact, if we haven't done a lot of the challenges, we will be doing more of those. And if you guys got suggestions for those, drop them into the chat. Also drop those suggestions, go into that Facebook group and drop suggestions in there. What would you like to see for live from lockdown? What would you like to see us cover? What would you like to see for our weekly tutorials? By the way, I've got a two minute tutorial this week um, and you can see it's there on YouTube, which shows you how to work on multiple views at the same time. So when I'm working inside of Photoshop, I can have it large and I can have it small. 
large and small at the same time, you know, zoomed in, zoomed out, and they are live. And you can work between them. I've got a, a one minute and 40 second video shows you guys how to do that. If you want to, you know, get suggestions for those videos, like you want to see me do different things for those videos, drop that into the Facebook group. The link there is in the chat. I'll drop it into the comments after this, you know, so replay crew can see that. Uh, but drop your suggestions. What would you like to see for tutorials? What would you like to see from live from lockdown? What kind of challenges would you like to see? You know, ideas for contests and things between the community. Um, you know, the cafe is a community and let's, let's get some things going. I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So let me know that. All right. So let's look at your guys' work this week that you have suggested, suggested, um, you, you have posted. John Schultz. John, if you are here, reveal yourself. Um, beautiful piece of work here. Um, yep. Lot, Photo Maker says really talented people are doing that and uh, they are filter tutorials. Good suggestion. I like that. All right. So John, I like the text you've done here. Let's party. I guess in Scotland, you drink whiskey. Like we drink wine or beer here. Um, you just screw top, screw top whiskey, you know, just pop it in, you know, the lid, you know, anyway, so looks good. I like this. Um, what I like is the texture. I like the, the, uh, you know, the context over here with the cup and different things here. And, uh, you know, there's some nice little overlays here. Now these can be done with brushes too. You know, we've been doing this week or you can just use texture overlays too. All right. Looks good. Good job, John. Sue, Sue Leonard, Sue Leonard was showing some prints and this is something, you know, that we, don't see so much of these days, which is kind of a shame because there's something just magical happens to your image when you print it. I have an Epson printer behind me. Um, you've probably seen it and I've got tutorials and videos, reviews and stuff on my printer. But when you take your pieces and you print them out and you frame them, it just really just adds so much to your images. It just adds, you know, just so much value. And it's just beautiful to look at these uh, tactile and it just, you know, so thank you for sharing this, Sue. Um, I don't know if you guys print. Let me know if you print. Um, photo maker, Colin, per your double window video this week, is there a way to close the second window without losing Photoshop? Edits? Yeah, sure. If you close a uh, photo maker, if you close any of those windows, as long as you've got one open, you don't lose any of your edits. So just don't close them both. But it will ask you to save the file anyway, so you're not going to accidentally do that. Okay, so good job, Sue. Are you here? Um, and Dana, Dana Carr. This is cool. I like what you're doing here with this um, texture mansion. Um, it has a really cool kind of collage, you know, like old school scissors and paste up kind of feel to it. And um, obviously it's not, but this, I, I like what you've got here. It's kind of, it's cool. It's a, it's a very nice look there. Um, let's see here. So Kelly Kirsty likes to print. And roll. Roll. Um, Bermundas. Bermundas. Roll Bermundas. I know you go by another name. Um, Roll's entered a lot of our contests and won some of them too, I believe. And so I'm going to guess this is a painting. This is really great. I love what you're doing here. Um... I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie Gattaca. This kind of reminds me of Gattaca a little bit. So um, he has a great way. You know, he's obviously using brushes uh, very well inside this particular piece. And uh, nice, nicely done. Watercolor looking photo maker says, yeah. So, oh, Dana, good to see you there. Thank you for sharing that. And Deborah loves this as well. Yeah, Raul's very talented. Um, he's done some incredible work. Um, Love his work. Bunny, Bunny Connolly, are you here? So we've got this bear um, having some fun in here. This is, this is kind of fun. I see you got the cobweb there, you got the bear, you got the hawk coming in, flying in through the window. Um, fun composition. Um, thanks for sharing this. I always find your. There's something very whimsical and fun about your compositing. Thanks for sharing it. And uh, Terry Robertson, this is like a dam somewhere. And uh, once again, we've got some textures. I guess we're because we were doing the 
brushes theme i guess i was inspired by the brush theme things this week um so it was very good and then i don't know how to say your name here um i i could start to pronounce the characters in english but i'm probably going to get it wrong but i like this and we can see here these are the pieces that she used or he used i believe it's a she though these are the pieces used to create this composite nicely done and uh oh Anova, Pavlova. Okay, so there we go. We know we know who it is. So thank you, Anova, for sharing these. And uh, and if you guys are you know looking for challenges, go to free places you know like Unsplash or places like that, or even Adobe Stock now has a bunch of free photos. You can just search by free, and just grab photos, and they're a great way to experiment and you know just try to you know just flex your your skills a little bit with compositing and stuff like that it's a good way to do it she looks a little bit like angelina joy lee with it with blue eyes or maybe angelina joy lee has blue eyes who knows i don't know anyway guys so that's um about all we got time for this week um i thank you guys for tuning in we're at two o'clock so top of the hour um Thank you for coming in for Life from Lockdown this week. And we'll be back next week with something um, exciting. I have no idea what it'll be yet. But once again, drop your comments in here. Go to that Facebook group and drop suggestions in there. Maybe I'll start a suggestions thread. And um, this week was brushes because actually someone suggested it um, last week. I said, hey, can we do brushes? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do brushes. So that's why we did brushes. So I'm looking for your guys' suggestions um i could teach all kinds of different things and we could cover all kinds of things but uh you know let's do what you guys are wanting to learn or what you're curious about or maybe stuff there's not so many tutorials around about i mean i can keep doing compositing or different things like that we could do a fix my photo now if you guys are interested in fix my photo let's get some photos going there i'd like to um, find some fresh work so fix my photo is where i take your guys photographs that you submit and then I Photoshop them live in front of everybody. Maybe I'll do something fun with it. Maybe we'll turn it into a piece of art. Or maybe there's a, a problem in there we can fix or resolve. Whatever you want to do, just upload your photos to fixmyphoto.net. Not .com, fixmyphoto.net. Upload your photos there. Uh, put your name in the file name so we know it's you. We can give you a shout out. And um, no more than three images. So, you know, three images maximum each uh, per week. And then just throw some of those in and we'll get some photos going. And then when we have a good little collection of photos and I find some stuff there that's really inspiring me, we'll do another Fix My Photos. Does that sound good, guys? And so anyway, good to see all the regulars here. Dana, Tracy, Photo Maker, Chris Bacon, Orca Pest. Um, I see some new names here. Thanks for joining us. I see uh, Misty Moss, of course, a regular. Klaus, a regular. Susan, Yvonne. Uh, Alice Deer, good to see you guys again. Hannah, Warren, uh, Paul, good to see you. Um, we've got Dana, of course, Philip, Bruce, of course, Klaus. Good to see all you guys. Thank you for joining us. A lot of you have not missed a single episode. So hopefully, you know, with the craziness going on in this world right now, you know, we've got lockdowns, we don't have lockdowns, we've got we're open ah just kidding we're locked down again you know it's a crazy world right now so you know as long as we can come together here at the cafe one thing unifies us all and that is our passion for art our fashion photography design illustration photoshop and you know what we leave the politics at the door we leave all the nonsense at the door we come here and we come together around photoshop and as a family and just have a good time so anyway guys Thanks for joining us. Do me a favor. If you got even the slightest bit of value out of this, hit that like button. That's the thumbs up. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, subscribe, hit notifications, and you'll get my, I do short videos every Tuesday, two, three minute tip. And then every Thursday, we come together 1 p.m. Pacific time where we get together. We get into the weeds. Uh, we go live. We are unscripted, unsponsored, unscrupulous and we just have a good time and really this is more about two things really community which is that where the chat is so if you're not able to join us live try and join us live because the chat really is a solid community hundreds of messages in here it goes crazy it, it, it's a community that you you can be part of if you can't make it and you're part of the um, replay crew you're still part of the family even though we don't see you live drop your comments underneath 
and uh, I'll, I'll check those out and engage with those later. And of course, we're also here to learn and dig into Photoshop. And because it's live and unscripted, we can go down thing, you know, like when you make, let, let me be honest, when I make a video on YouTube, there's certain topics I would love to do. Like, you know, let me show you typography. But the thing is, they don't do well um, in YouTube. And here's the challenge is when I do those as a short video, if I do I, the way the algorithm works, is certain topics I would love to do. But if I do those topics, they're going to bomb. And you get enough topics bomb, what happens is YouTube doesn't show your videos to anybody. So that's why I have to pick topics that might seem like a little like hypey sometimes or clickbaity. They're not. It's like literally if you don't have videos that people want to watch, YouTube doesn't show your videos to anybody. But when we go here in live from lockdown, this is where we can get into a lot of those things like might not make a video because it will hurt the channel. Unfortunately, it's the way the algorithm works. I'm being 100% transparent and honest here. That's how it is. Um, but when we get here live, we can dive into all these things and we don't really care because we're not here for the algorithm. We're here to get together and have our time. Anyway, I've talked enough. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week, 1 p.m. Pacific time. See ya.